Okay, so I don't know where this whole chat GPT thing's going, but my chat GPT videos are pretty popular, so that means I'm gonna make some more. Uh, and, and I do want to look at, you know, what, where are we going? I mean, what can this do? I've, I've looked at, you know, the, the student side of it, can it explain different things? And it can definitely create programs, uh, it can create Python programs fairly well, not always perfect, but that gets you pretty much all the way there. But now imagine like I have ChatGPT, it's my in-class assistant. I'm like, hey, can you help me do stuff? And so I actually already typed this in there because it's kind of slow. I didn't really read it yet though. Um, so I, I said, imagine that I'm teaching a class, I need some activities to use in class. And so see if ChatGTP can come up with them. I haven't looked at the responses, but I did type it in. So I said, right here, I'm teaching an introductory physics course. Can you make some conceptual multiple choice questions that can use to help students understand centripetal acceleration? And you know the idea here is I do like to use these. Um, I, I, some people call them clicker questions, uh, where you put up a conceptual question, students vote on the answer, and then we can discuss it. I, they're really great. It's a great way, especially for a large class. Uh, you can do a whole bunch of stuff with them. So let's see what it came up with. Okay, it's it's always you know polite. Sure, I can do that for you, I, and I never polite did it, and that's rude. And I have to respect our o robot overlords, right? Okay, so here are a few conceptual questions. One, a car is driving around a circular track. Which of the following statements is true about the car's motion? At a constant speed. At a constant speed. The car is accelerating towards the center of the circle. That is true. The car is not accelerating at all. That cannot be true. The car is accelerating in a straight line. That could be true. It could be speeding up. The car is accelerating direction perpendicular to its velocity. Yes. That's true, too. Hmm. Interesting. So I, I think the only one that's not true is B. Um, okay, it says the answer is A. Let's see. But you know, I, honestly, this question would be great in class because students arguing over why one answer could be correct or the other is useful. It, it the, the point is to start a discussion. So I, w I could use this in class. I don't think I would, but I could. Next question. An airplane is flying in a circular path at a constant altitude. How does the magnitude of the airplane's acceleration compare to its speed? Okay, this is just a straight recall. You know, the acceleration is V squared over R, but let's just see. The magnitude of the acceleration is great. That's not, that can't be true. One, you're comparing two different things. You're comparing velocity and acceleration they they are two that's like saying which is greater your height or your weight well it depends on what i measure my height in and what i measure my weight in right so you can't really compare the magnitude of the acceleration is equal to the speed the magnitude of the acceleration is less than the speed the magnitude of the acceleration is inversely proportional to the speed the, it says the magnitude of the acceleration is less than the speed let's see if i can get it to fix these a rock is tied to a string and swung around a circular path. What is the direction of the force on the rock? The force is the same direction as the rock's velocity. Again, it depends on if the is the is the rock speeding up. It doesn't say it's moving at a constant speed. Uh, the force is in the opposite direction of the rock's velocity. Technically, that could be true too, right? It could be going around a circle and slowing down. That's possible. The force is perpendicular to the rock's velocity. Yes. It has to at least have a perpendicular component because it's moving in a circle. See, that's... Mm, okay, let's see. So that's what it said. Let's go up here. Um, and I'm going to say this. For question two, how can you compare two different things? acceleration and velocity and it's going to say i know it's going to say i apologize for the error of course you're right you're always right let's just see what it says in the context of this question the magnitude of the acceleration and speed are being compared you still can't do that um hmm okay that's not good. Hey, how about this? I'm going to ask you one more thing. I'm imagining that I'm, I'm a faculty, 
that I'm a physics faculty, because I actually am. Um, and I want to have the students do some activity in class. Let's see if it can do that. What is an in-class activity my students could do to help them understand? Let's see. I, I, I was. It should be some part of centripetal acceleration. But I'm just going to say centripetal acceleration, centripetal acceleration. Let's see. This one. Curious. One in class activity. Tie rocked. <laughs> tie rocked. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> tie rocked and swing it around in a circle. Have the students measure the radius of the circular path and the time it takes for the rock to complete one full revolution. Um, from this, the students can calculate the speed of the rock and the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration. Um, okay, so if there's two problems here. If you're swinging around in a vertical circle, and the speed's not going to be constant because there's gravitational force pulling, speeding it up, slowing it down. If you spin it around in a horizontal circle, it's not going to be completely flat um, unless it's on like a frictionless table or something like that. Uh, by performance activity, students will have concrete experience of how an object moving in a circular path is constantly accelerating toward the center. I don't see how they, they do that. Um, let, me, let me just try one more thing. Okay. Can you write because it's pretty good at writing programs, a Python program using GlowScript, GlowScript that shows the direction of acceleration for Alexa, stop. Sorry. I have two robots, right? That'd be fun to get one talk to the other, but okay that shows the direction of acceleration for an object moving in a circle is towards the center. It's going to say, sure, I can do that. Here's your program. Oh, it didn't say sure. Okay. It did say GlowScript. Look, at it, it, it correct. See, but it, it didn't use GlowScript because GlowScript does not have this. Well, that's fine. Um, Centripetal scene canvas. Well, I don't know why they have that. Object is at the center. Radius speed. The position is the okay. They they make the object and they move it, and then they give it a velocity. And then they set the time step, accelerate. And they made an arrow. This is one thing that I think is fun. Um, they don't do like a time. They do a number of steps. Uh, I've seen this program do that multiple times. Okay, update the position. Okay, a velocity. So this is not gonna work. Oh no, they did. Look, so velocity squared over r times r hat. So this should be negative. There should be a negative sign right there. Um, update the arrow. Okay, let's see. Let's copy it. Let's find out. You want to try? Um, copy that. And I'm going to, I have my, I have it right here, I think. Yep. So here's Trinket. Just going to paste it. I need to get rid of the VPython. And let's just run it. Oh, it actually worked. But like I said, the arrow is too small and the acceleration is in the opposite direction. Let's see if I can fix that. Um, I think this, this would work. Okay, so now now I think it is moving in a circle. Let's make it, let's do this. Why is it red? I, red just doesn't show up. Make trail equals true. But you know, this is actually kind of nice. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, let's see if it can fix its error. The object doesn't move in a circle. Can you fix that? Oh, I'm so sorry. Here's the error. Let's see. If, okay, let's see. Sometimes it, the slowness is just, you know, not, is just too much for me. But let's see if it catches the one error. But, you know, even if it doesn't catch the error, you know, typing all that stuff, making the object, putting in the location, uh, it doesn't use the same 
a format that I'd use. But it is, if I want to make a quick demo program, this would be, you know, sort of useful. And then blue and red, I just don't know. Nope, it didn't get it. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell it. I'm gonna tell it and see if if it fixes it. I don't know what it changed. The object position between velocity and the time step rather than being set to fix, but that's not true. Okay, let's see. Oh, it, just, oh, it does stop sometimes. The acceleration still points towards the center. Okay, I think you need a negative sign in front of your acceleration, in your acceleration constant ca calculation. Let's see if it gets that. And then I'm going to stop. Oh, I'm correct. <laughs> oh, well, that's, it, I think it figured it. That's true. I wonder if it's actually learning, though, you know? Oh, good. It just fixed that one part. Nice. Okay. So, so where are we? ChatGPT is still fun. Um, I think that with some improvements, it could get better, right? It could be useful. It could be of the type where, hey, give me some questions to use in class. Um, oh, let's try one more thing. No, I did. If I do it, it's just going to say the same thing. What's a, a demo? I would I would like to ask it a demo, but I think I'd like to do another topic. So maybe I'll do another Chat GPT. I actually have enough of these. I'm going to put them in a Chat GTPT playlist in case you want to see my other Chat GTPT things. And I'll put a link to that down below. Um, and so that's that. I might use this, but I'm not sure. Later.